In this video, we're going to name and write formulas for ternary ionic compounds. So we know how to find derivatives for polyatomic ions. Now that we know how to find those, we know how to name most polyatomic ions. Let's go take a look at how do, how do we apply this to um, naming and writing formulas. So the general rule is that we simply name the metal first in our, in our uh, compound, and then we name the polyatomic ion according to how it should be named um, without changing the ending or anything about it. Um, so we'll start off with some simple ones, and then we'll see somewhere we have to do a little bit more work involved. Uh, let's start with this first one here. We have Na2CO3. So that's just a regular sodium ion, so sodium. And CO3 here, um, that's one of the five H's you need to memorize, and that's carbonate. We didn't change any endings, we just named it sodium carbonate. Let's go and take a look at another one that's fairly simple. Um, here we have the compound NaNO3. So we have the metal sodium and the polyatomic ion NO3, which is uh, one of the eight you have to memorize, nitrate. Let's look at the next one here, MgCO3. We have the metal magnesium, magnesium. We have CO3, which is carbonate, one of the five eights you had to memorize. Let's look at the next one here, Ca3PO3-2. So the identity of the polyatomic ion is determined by what's inside here. Don't worry about the subscript on the outside. Worry about what's inside. That's PO3. So remember that one of your five eights was PO4. PO4, three minus. And that was phosphate. PO3 is one oxygen less. So that eight became an I. So don't forget that that's phosphite, so be careful there. So this is calcium phosphite. Phosphite. Not phosphide. If it was calcium phosphide IDE, that would be Ca3P2. So if it was phosphide, that would be the regular binary ionic. So it's not this, okay? Um, and now let's go to Na2PO5. So here's another case where we have a weird looking polyatomic ion. We're not quite sure what it is yet. It's a PO5. And actually this charge here, let me just fix that before we continue. This should be Na3PO5, not Na2. So remember that PO4 3 minus is phosphate. But we have PO5 3 minus. So that is a per added in the front. That's per phosphate. It's one above the phosphate. So we have sodium per. phosphate. And so next what we're going to do is we're going to go name a few other ones. Let's go to name this one over here. So uh, normally we'd name the metal first and then the non-metal or the polyatomic ion after, but in this case we have a, a weird exception, not a weird exception, we have an exception. It's, it's ammonium. So our polyatomic ion is positive in this case, so it comes first. And then we name our non-metal by changing the ending to I. So this is ammonium, not ammonia. Ammonia is the compound NH3. This is ammonium chloride. Okay, so just remember, NH3 is a compound. That's ammonia. Okay, this is not, it's not equal to NH, oops, NH4+, plus, which is ammonium. Remember that. So we're going to go ahead and name our last two. And the reason I save them for last, because those there are the 
um, ternary compounds that contain multivalent elements. So notice that the rules are going to be the same. It's just that we need to make sure that we identify which multivalent element version we're dealing with. So for example, in this copper sulfate here, so this is copper sulfate, because SO4 is sulfate. Am I dealing with copper 1 or copper 2? So we need to find what the charge of that copper is, and we can do that either using charge balancing or reverse crisscross, and I'll show you both methods. So let's go ahead and do that down here. So we have copper 1. And when I do reverse crisscross, I always put the polyatomic ion in brackets because you're not going to reverse crisscross the atoms of the polyatomic ion. If you do, you're changing the ion altogether. So put that in brackets and then put the one on the outside. Oftentimes, if there already is more than one of the polyatomic ion, you'll have a number there. So for example, here, I have PO3 two on the outside. I could crisscross just with that two there and it's already protected. But if you don't have a protection in front of your polyatomic ion, make sure you put it in brackets. So now I'm going to crisscross the one up here, here, and I get Cu1 plus SO4 1 minus. Now remember, SO4 is sulfate. It should be 2 minus. Here we have 1 minus. So what that means is that this was reduced by dividing by 2. So we need to multiply everything by 2 to get 2 minus back and 2 plus here. So this is copper 2 sulfate, or in the classic system, cupric sulfate, like that. You could have also done the charge balancing method. So for example, we know there's one sulfate, and that sulfate is a charge of 2 minus, and we know there's one copper. We know the overall charge needs to be zero. So if there's only one copper, that overall charge has to be plus two, not plus one. Otherwise, we'd have a charge of negative one. And so that's how you could go about finding the charge using the charge balancing method. Now, let's go ahead and um, name our last one. Uh, so again, iron, we noticed that it is a multivalent element. Um, and because iron is a multivalent element, we have to identify which iron we're dealing with. So I'm going to put iron brackets. The PO4 remember is phosphate. And uh, we could do the reverse crisscross. So Fe, protect your polyatomic ion, PO4 there. Put a one on the outside. Okay. One here, crisscross like this. Crisscross like this, we get Fe1 plus PO4 1 minus. PO4 should be 3 minus, so this was reduced by dividing by 3. So it becomes 3, 3 plus. So this is iron 3 phosphate, or classic name, ferric phosphate. I'm going to do one more naming example just to show you the reverse crisscross one more time and how it works and also the charge balancing one more time and how it works. For this one here though, just to show you charge balancing, we have a 1PO4 and we know its charge is 3 minus and we have 1 iron and we're thinking of what the charge is. If you said the charge was 2 plus, it wouldn't be correct because that wouldn't make a zero overall charge. So really the only charge you can have here is plus 3, 0. And that would give you your iron 3. So let's do one more example to make sure we really understand naming. So let's do, let's have um, Cu NO2. So I want you to be careful here. So we know that copper is a multivalent element. So we know that we're going to have copper something. And actually, I'm going to need more room here. So I'm going to have to rethink how I'm writing this. So this is going to be copper something 
Be careful here. This is NO. It's not NO2. It's NO in brackets. So remember, if you have NO3, that's nitrate. NO3 minus. If you have NO2 minus, that's nitrite. If you have NO minus, that's hypo nitrite. So this is copper something hypo nitrite. Trite, not D, but T, nitrite. Um, and we can do a reverse crisscross. And you get Cu2 plus NO1 minus. I didn't have to protect here because it was already protected within the bracket since it was a subscript on the outside. Um, NO1 minus, that is a charge of NO, so it wasn't reduced. So this is indeed copper 2, hyponitrite, or cupric, hyponitrite, or cupric, hyponitrite, not nitride. You could have done the charge balancing method. So just to show you what that looks like. We have Cu, there's, what was our formula? That was Cu, N, O, 2. So you have one Cu, and you have two hyponitrites, which are minus one each. And so if you have one Cu, and you want this whole thing to be zero, that one Cu needs to be plus two to give you, oops, plus two to give you zero. So this question mark has to be plus two. And so in this video, we learned how to name uh, compounds containing ionic compounds containing polyatomic ions. Um, and we even included multivalent elements within there as well. Uh, we followed the same rules as normally, but just you need to make sure that you figure out um, which um, multivalent element that you were dealing with. And when you're doing reverse crisscross, be sure not to destroy the polyatomic ion itself. And the other added layer to this is that um, you do need to find your derived polyatomic ions like phosphate, phosphite, perphosphate, um, hypophosphite, nitrate, nitrite, hypophosphite, pernitrate, so on and so forth. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to um, go from a name to a formula.